Mortgage Workway and On the Menu, which is your source for the concentrated mortgage and real estate news. And we chose Tom Ward of Majestic Consulting to do this for you because um, he is uh, he brings a keen sense, a firsthand sense, to speaking about achieving remarkable profitability in the mortgage and real estate industries, regardless of market conditions, which is very important right now. Um, Tom has built eight companies from the ground up. He founded Majestic Mortgage in 1987, selling three Century 21 agencies in the transition. And um, he grew Majestic to a $400 million a year multi-state mortgage banker before its May 2006 merger into Cherry Creek Mortgage Company. He's a member of the National Speakers Association and author of the book, The Empathy Effect, Building Your Business and Your Wealth by Putting Yourself in Other People's Shoes. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Tom Ward. Well, thanks for that, Corey. It was uh, a, a kind of, we've got a smaller, smaller group on. Uh, it was interesting because I actually opened a mortgage company up and I never took a loan application before, so I did not know what the 1003 form was when I first started out. And uh, if I knew what I knew now, I probably, I'm, I'm not sure I would have done that. So uh, let me just, you know, I, I want to touch on one piece here. I sold real estate when Prime was at 21%. Uh, the important piece of that was the fact that um, at 21 percent, I mean, plug that into your calculator, mortgage folks, and you know, fixed rates were hovering 16 and a half, 17 percent, so it was a little tough. Uh, I bring this up to you because there's some parallels that I see today in today's market, meaning that um, you know the the, the business kind of slowed down a little bit. Uh, we got to the point. I was in a town called Antioch, Illinois. Uh, there was 5,700 people in it. Uh, right on the nor- right on the northern Illinois border, just south of Wisconsin, as far as the border was concerned, I had ten salespeople working for me, uh, managing a Century 21 office there, and we sold the house a day for 180 straight days. Uh, once you can get momentum going in this market, it's unbelievable uh, how much you can accomplish. You know, it was like the Field of Dreams, meaning that you'd see these cars, uh, you know, the picture in Field of Dreams where the cars are driving down the road and all you see is headlights and we'd have people come from a long way apart because we were only ones doing that and I'll share with you I think what we need to be able to do it's nowhere near that and I've lived this before uh, but it's interesting I talk a little bit about what I call an eclipse in the marketplace uh, in one of the videos that we're doing and uh, I'll get into that a little bit here as we get through that 87 I opened Majestic Mortgage up never took a loan application before I was just getting bad service uh, from the folks that I was referring business to, and a friend of mine was running household bank at in the wholesale department, and basically said, "Tom, just you need twenty five thousand dollars net worth, and you know, be breathing, and they could give you a mortgage. You know, they give you a mortgage license." And uh, I felt as though I did that primarily to service my past clients. Obviously, sold those offices, those three cents twenty one offices through that period of time, and then two thousand one, I had some intellectual property that you know, from training and, and consulting and some product, we have some product called My Rate Alert and the Move Up Tax Analysis and the HBDR calculator and things like that, and, and we had to have a place to house all those because I had people, after I'd speak, I would have people coming to me and actually asking me, Tom, can we buy that product? Well, I'd sell it outside of the state of Illinois, which is where my you know my major branches were, and then I branched out uh, beyond that and had uh, wound up having seven branches uh, across the country. And then in May of 2006, I merged Majestic Mortgage with Cherry Creek, uh, two guys in a, an organization which I've been, uh, which is a huge part of my success, which is called a YPO, which is Young Presidents Organization, uh, basically came to me. They were with me for 11 years together and said to me, they kind of did an intervention, and they said, Tom, you either need to pursue your passion and divest yourself of your huge asset, which was Majestic Mortgage, or you need to be able to put your passion on ice and, and move your mortgage business forward. I felt as though I had to get bigger or smaller. Well, Obviously, you know, you've been in the business 19 years. It's tough to be able to get smaller. Your ego sometimes doesn't allow that. And then the second thing that happens is that, you know, I didn't want to be able to take risk at that point in my life and build it bigger. So I made the decision to move on and pursue my passion. And uh, it's interesting when I spoke to that group and the realtor group that was out there, um, I knew, you know, I know why I should be here today because there's a lot of people feeling pain. And I think there's something that I need to be able to uh, flash back to what was there. It's not that bad. Uh, I think the difference in this business today uh, is what I call a 5149 proposition. And I think that it's so hard uh, to stay positive in a light, and I'll kind of get into that here in a minute. So let me go and start presenting here, and we'll kind of leave some time at the end here so anybody who's got 
some pain or uh, you know some situations that potentially I can help you with on the call, I'll be more than happy to do that. Um, I wrote a book called The Empathy Effect, not to write it to go out there and do it. I wanted to have a place to house all the information that I had. It's called Build Your Business and Your Wealth by Putting Yourself in Other People's Shoes. Um, the title came four months after we wrote it. I hired a, a writer with me. I didn't call him a ghostwriter. I actually put his name in here at the same time. But interesting, the title came four months later because I felt as though the common thread of success uh, for me personally as well as uh, professionally was empathy. So, you know, we get into it. You can get that uh, on our website or go to uh, just send us an email. You get it on Amazon as well. Uh, but just send us an email, and we'll be more than happy to guide you to the right places if you want to be able to participate in that uh, purchase as far as that's concerned. I, I think the consumer is who I call the forgotten one. Interesting, we've got people on the call that are title people, mortgage people, realtors, probably some operational people, and I think that uh, the consumer is the forgotten one. And I think that uh, during the heyday of real estate as well as the refi mania for the mortgage folks that were out there, um, we kind of forgot about this, and I think that uh, the consumer is really the one that we have to focus on because if uh, we have no consumer, there's no sale and uh, for everybody, title people, credit people, uh, mortgage folks, realtors, the whole nine yards. And, and I think it's the simple, and I, and I think that I don't have a slide on this, but if you want to write something down, it, it, it basically is a mantra that I've probably lived my whole life on in that uh, common sense is not that common. And uh, I think it's important to understand that because you look at people today and they function, uh, you know, through this process. But, you know, it really is, well, that's just common sense time. Yeah, well, if it was that easy, everybody would be doing it. So here's the three things I think we need to be able to do. I think we've got to be able to figure out what they want. I've spent 25 years of my career really understanding the consumer to understand what makes them tick. Uh, the consumer will change over time. This is not just the mortgage consumer or the real estate consumer. Uh, this is uh, the consumer in life. This is the consumer who purchases at Nordstrom's or Walmart or buys gas at the local gas station or, you know, which grocery store do they shop at. So I think we've got to be able to find out what they want. And over the past six months, I've really kind of reengaged that component. And I've got a pretty good idea of what the consumer wants today. I think we either have to be able to create it uh, or if we have it, and you just bring it back out of the sh off the shelf. And I think we've got to be able to give it to them. And I think those are the three components uh, that are real important. And it's a novel concept. When you want to be able to find out what the consumer wants, you know, what we might want to do is just ask them. And I did a lot of asking uh, to figure out where that is. So I think there's three new skill sets that are required for you. Call it survival. Call it success. Call it winning, whichever way you want to be able to look at that. And uh, the other thing I think it's real important here is that uh, this is for 2008 and forward, but uh, don't throw ourselves under the bus. I've seen a lot of people today uh, kind of throw themselves underneath the bus and say, ah, I should have done that, I could have been better at this. We didn't need these skill sets back in, you know, real estate mania and refi mania uh, five years ago. Uh, there was no need for these skill sets. So don't throw yourself under the bus uh, with what's going on there because you didn't need them, so why go after them? You needed to be able to get every possible transaction from the front to the back and, uh, you know, make a commission uh, on doing that. And I think it's real important.